Hello, I'm Dale Meyer. Welcome to SEMCAST. Joining me today is Dr. Charles Arendt. He is a professor of systematic theology at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis and also chair of the systematics department. He recently authored a new document titled, Together with All Creatures, Caring for God's Living Earth. And it is this document that we are going to discuss on this special SEMCAST series. Welcome, Dr. Aaron. We're glad you're here. Thank you. It's here. good to be here. Um, let me get straight to, straight to this question. Global warming and the rise of the oceans, what will that do to the campus of our Concordia College here? <laughs> well, I think we're set up on high enough ground. We'll be okay. <laughs> we might be an island, but who knows? Is this, is, are you a tree hugger? I don't know if I would call myself a tree hugger. That's kind of a uh, loaded term. But I am very much interested uh, in this topic. Uh, from a Christian perspective uh, for a number of reasons. Okay, you, you authored this document for the CTCR, which is? Our Commission on Theology and Church Relations. I was at least the primary drafter. Um, at our last synodical convention, the request was made that our church body take up uh, this issue. And so over the past three years, I've been working on this. We've had a number of very, very helpful consultants come in uh, on a number of occasions. And um, it's, it seems to have been well received, but the commission recently passed it uh, this past week, in fact. And so hopefully in the summer of 2010, fall of 2010, uh, we'll see it come forward or it'll be published as a document of the Commission on Theology and Church Relations. So all the viewers of SEMCAST will be able to get this document and, and study it talk about it, discuss it, go to the Bible in discussing the document. You, you said, Chuck, that um, this topic was of interest to you for several reasons. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, um, a couple are fairly practical. First of all, this is a topic on, that has the potential for opening new conversations uh, for us with people maybe we haven't been in conversation with. Uh, those who perhaps have been uh, more interested in environmental issues, and I suppose maybe those who are on the more uh, liberal end of the political spectrum, but um, I just think we have an opportunity there. Secondly, there is a real opportunity with uh, young people. Um, this is an important issue for them, and for many of them, uh, they'll take the approach that the church doesn't care about what we care about, then why should I care about what the church cares about? Uh, many of them have been raised up in the schools where this has been uh, a fairly important topic for them. Um, I think most importantly, however, is what I would say is a theological reason. Um, as Christians, we hold to all three articles of the Creed. And a lot of times, I think, Christians give the impression of focusing only on the second article of the Creed, Jesus Christ, or the third article, um, dying going to heaven. But we don't always focus on what we'll call the first article of the Creed, our life within creation. Mm -hmm. You, you mentioned that, that there are those people who will not uh, pay too much attention to the church mm -hmm. and our message. And is it correct that that is especially true in this day and age when institutions generally are under attack and many people who are outside of the church will look at the church as just an old institution trying to perpetuate itself? Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, trying to perpetuate itself uh, perhaps not that interested in this world or helpful uh, for life within this world um, and focused on other concerns. I, I think you're absolutely right. Now, when you, you have talked about this, you've gone to college campuses, you've had consultations, what's the response been to this kind of new emphasis by the, by the church and our church in the stewardship of God's living earth? Yeah, well, I can't say that it's um, widespread yet in terms of getting the word out. I don't think yet, most, yet. <laughs> most don't know that uh, uh, we've been working on this as a, a church body. But I'd have to say very favorably, both among, say, professors at our Concordia universities as well as uh, uh, among students, because oh, well, partly for the reasons that I suggested, they're kind of happy to see the church affirming uh, things that they think are important. Hmm. And, and then revisit also for us, as, as we're getting our heads around this, for many of us, new concept, and for many people, not a new concept, 
revisit again this what you said about the three articles of the creed yeah when you and I uh, confess the Apostles Creed for example believe in God the Father maker of heaven and earth you know is what we call the first article and then in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord the second article of the Creed and in the Holy Spirit the third article of the Creed so they're organized around the Trinity or organized around the works of each person creation redemption and sanctification and, and, and so rather than to go head straight to the second article, with some people, the first article is an entree point for discussion. Yes, and frankly, for even for Christians, uh, Genesis comes before all the other books. Uh, creation comes before redemption and sanctification. And I think something people don't realize is that when the Apostles' Creed was formulated, for example, Christianity gave a new vision to the world about creation. Creation, Christians affirmed, is good. It's not, the earth is not the dungeon of the universe. Our bodies are not prisons for the soul. Um, Christianity said creation is good, the result of an action by a gracious God. Am I, am I, am I getting into this topic when I say that I like to take walks? And sometimes I'll walk over to Washington University, mm -hmm. our neighbor, and wander into the Planetary Science Building where there is an exact replica of the Mars rover. And I look at that, this first article stuff, yeah. and I think, wow, what a universe God made. And then when I leave, I think of Psalm 8, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. Is that the way this works? Very much so. I, I would argue that the more we've become disconnected from the created world, um, we lose a sense of that humility, you might say, as well as a sense of the wonder for both the magnificence and mystery of uh, a creation. I think if, particularly as sinners, as long as we live only within, how should I say, buildings and cities of our own construction, it's easy to become enamored with our own abilities and our own powers. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm looking forward to this series, and this is the first of a uh, several-part series on this topic where you'll be able to teach me and teach all of us. If you were going to state in one or two sentences what it is that makes us want to get into this topic and what it is that makes this topic so mind-expanding for many of us, a kind of a tease to the, <laughs> to the programs that are going to come, what would it be? Well, I would like to think that just as we gave uh, the world a positive vision of creation, our challenge now is to provide the world with a positive vision of what it means to be a human creature. The reason I say that is because the central question that arises out of the environmental movement, um, and when I've read environmental ethics texts and so forth, the central question is, how do we see ourselves and our relationship to the earth on which we live? Are we a part of it? Are we separate from it? Are we masters of it? Are we beneath it? These are actually some pretty profound theological questions. And I think we have an opportunity to provide a positive vision for how we live within creation, rather than always being motivated by apocalyptic scenarios mm -hmm. of uh, impending doom and gloom. That's great. I mean, this, this was a, a stimulating discussion right now. And our subsequent SEMCAS are going to be very stimulating. Uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Aaron, for the time uh, today. And I want to thank you for joining us today on SEMCAST. Be sure to explore all the great resources at the Concordia Seminary website and consider visiting, perhaps attending, the seminary here in St. Louis. Uh, we'll be back again with Dr. Aaron more on our stewardship of God's living earth. And I hope you'll join us.